In this video, you're going to understand how you can start your mobile test automation journey using Appium WebDriver IO. You're going to see how you can find elements in the screen, how you can type, how you can click on different elements and do some validations. I want to well, uh, give you all the overview in the step by step of how you can do it. So I hope that you can support this video, hit the like button, subscribe and well, welcome to the master's family. I just wanted to tell you that if you want to uh, well, follow me in this video, I recommend you to come here to the Android testing video that I made before. It is a full one hour uh, and I explain step by step all the dependencies that you need in your computer to well, work with this project. Um, you're gonna need Node.js, um, JDK and the Java Home variable uh, set up in your computer. You're gonna need Appium Inspector, Appium and Appium 2. And, and here you can see a guide of how you can install WebDriver IO, okay? So with this in mind, I recommend you to go ahead and check that video. You only have to look for Young Media, Android testing, and you're gonna see that, well, it has a lot of sections here and you can go a step by step of doing that. I've created the readme, uh, um, with all the information and all the requirements that you need in your computer if you want to follow up the video and come here and check as well this documentation is going to be amazing because here you can see well the dependencies that you need node.js you need java jdk and java home variables set up in your computer and you have a, a couple of links of how you can set up that in windows or mac depending on where you're working right in this particular case well since we're working with ios this is the link for sure right then here you have like all the steps that I have followed. I have explained that in the last video as well. If you're if you want to try Android as well, here you have the setup. But in this particular case, here is the iOS setup instructions that we need. And I want to well uh, focus on this because this is the important part. So the first one is install the Xcode uh, in our Mac OS. OK, so I'm going to open my um, well, my app store, right? And you're going to see that, uh, well, if you want to find for an application, you only have to come here and, and, and type in the search bar Xcode. OK, um, OK, here here we have the first option. And if you haven't installed this, um, well, this developer tool uh, in the past, you're going to have an, an install bot button over here. So you you only have to click on that. You're, you're going to have to wait for a. Uh, for a few seconds and minutes, to be honest, just be patient because it is going to take a lot of time. OK, as soon as you have installed this, uh, well, you're going to have access to this uh, IDE and like the framework where you can start developing well, iOS or native iOS applications. Right. And well, what we need from from this uh, app, uh, framework or developer tool is basically the simulator where we can start uh, using like a simulator for iPhone 14, 15, 16, and, and the, well, <laughs> all the, the versions that we have in the market, right? So uh, this is the, a, a very important part uh, and the first option or requirement that we need to have installed in your computer, right? The next one is basically install the Xcode command line tools, okay? So you can come here, copy this command, Xcode dash select double dash install. OK, so I'm going to copy this and I'll be opening my terminal, for example. OK, well, I'm going to clear this. Well, it is clear. Yeah. OK, and now I'm going to paste the command that I just showed you before. Right. Xcode select install. In my case, it is already installed. As you can see over here, common line tools are already installed. Use software update to install updates. OK, so uh, the next step that I would recommend you is to run this command Xcode dash select dash P. OK, and it should return something like this, like this particular path and um, could be dependent or different in your operating system, but could be or could look like this one. So so you can prove that the your Xcode uh, well, command line tools are working fine. OK, and then uh, another important part is to install this dependency over here. Well, it is not a dependency. It is a, a well, it is a dependency manager for Mac OS and iOS. And it is so important to get our um, automation working. You're going to see that in our app inspector. It is a, a dependency that we need to have installed for sure. OK, so you have to also have brew installed in your computer and then using brew you can install cartage over here i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing this correctly i'm sorry for that but i'm gonna copy this command and well you're gonna see that this is gonna work perfectly fine in my case it is already installed as well you can see that well it is telling me that if i want to reinstall it well instead of using install i can use reinstall 
<laughs> but that's it. Now, if you want to try and make sure that everything in your computer is working fine, well, the next option or the next instruction is using the Appium Inspector because the Appium Inspector is going to check that um, well, it's going to check that all the, the, um, the dependencies are installed correctly in your computer. So you just have to use Appium Inspector, right? And you are going to see that Inspector. Well, it is going to check Appium Inspector. What is wrong here? Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Appium Doctor. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, it is Appium Doctor. Yeah, Appium Doctor is the tool that I was telling you <laughs> that is going to check that uh, all the dependencies are uh, well installed correctly in your computer. You can see that here it is checking Node.js, it is checking Xcode, it is checking as well the Cartage uh, dependency or the, the manager, right? And well, if you if you want to try as well Android and, and that configuration, here you have also some checks uh, in progress. So that's it. Okay, now that you can see that I have all the checks in my operating system, I have Node, I have a cartridge, I have Xcode, I can continue, well, starting doing our automation stuff. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and try that. And see your thing that you need to install uh, is basically the um, driver to communicate our framework with Appium and the application, okay? So in this particular case, we need to install this particular driver, the XE UI test, okay? So here you have the command that you have to use, Appium driver install and the name of the particular driver. So you have to open your terminal, right? Uh, you can clear this, okay? And you can install that, okay? Appium driver install XE UI test, that's it. Now, if you, after you enter in this, uh, or after you press on your enter, right, keyboard, and you install the, the, the this particular driver, you can use another command that I provide you here in the repository, which is Appium driver list, okay? So you can come here, paste that particular command, and it is gonna, uh, well, return the list of uh, available available drivers in your computer. In my case, I do have the XE UI test driver with this particular version. Of course, it's gonna change depending on uh, where you're trying this because of course th there's gonna be more releases. And also here we have the UI Automator 2, which is for Android testing, right? So once you have done this, um, I also want to tell you that you, ha you have to come here and if you wanna follow this example, here you have the link for the SOS demo hybrid application. This is the application that we are gonna be using for testing purposes, okay? You're gonna see that this is uh, an application like this one, and well, we have a lot of options, but what we have to do uh, is come here to this particular link. Uh, the latest version of the iOS and Android app can be found here, so I, I'm gonna click on this. And you're gonna well, download the latest version of the application that they are developing, right? You have to scroll a little bit down and download the um, this particular file that you have here: iOS Simulator, my RN demo app, and uh, well, the one that ends with zip. You don't need the IPA or right right now because um, it requires a, another configuration if you wanna try your um, ap application in a real device. We can try that if in the future. Let me know in the comment section if you wanna see how to configure this application in a real device. But we're gonna be using a, a simulator. So you have to download this uh, zip file, okay? I, I don't wanna download it again because I already have it, but you're gonna need to e extract what it's inside of the zip file and you can place the folder that you get inside of your framework, okay? Uh, as you probably remember, I have the framework over here. I have placed the Android application under the app Android folder, but now I have an iOS folder as well. And you can see that this is the folder that I just extracted from the zip file, which is my RN demo app, okay? With this said, um, well, I can continue with the video. Now we're gonna try to configure our framework to get, um, well, or, or start doing our automation test process, okay? Let's do it, let's continue. You how you can uh, start interacting or finding elements uh, using the Appium Inspector. I know that the, if you followed my last video about how to use uh, the Appium Inspector with Android, you have like a basic idea, but what I want to do is uh, inspect what is inside of the application, right? 
to grab the, the different selectors and then perform some actions. I know, it's kind of tricky. Let's start uh, understanding and practicing what is happening here or what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna access my Appium Inspector, which is this application that we install. And it is also a dependency that, or a requirement for this project. You can see that I have specified that in my readme. Let me, let me look for that. Appium Inspector, here it is. And you can download a, well, that software over here and you can follow all the instructions that I give you or I gave you in the last video, okay? Once you have opened your Appium server, I also recommend you some uh, configurations or some parameters here, 0.0.0.0, .0 for remote host and remote port 4724. It is not the only one that you can use, but it has to be different compared to your configuration in the WebDriver IO project because we don't want conflicts, <laughs> okay? So you can see that the, the one that I'm using in my WebDriver IO is different, right, than the one that I'm using in the App Inspector, okay? I'm gonna explain you what is happening in this configuration file in a few seconds, so I can try to well, start again with the explanation for you. No worries, I'll, I'll, I'll recap a bit for you, okay? Now that I have this configured, okay, you can see that also the remote path, path, uh, path is an slash, the root. And then you're gonna be required to enter some desired capabilities that is going to help Appium Inspector to get connected with the simulator that you're gonna use. What I'm trying to say with simulator is that you're gonna need to open Xcode, okay, to identify the simulator that you want to use. Uh, if you wanna, uh, try this, you can create a new Xcode project, uh, perform some next, next, next steps, and you're gonna have a similar project like, like the one that I'm gonna be opening over here. This is a, a pretty basic uh, Swift project that I can run over here. And what well, is gonna be like the developer um, environment, right? Where they can start testing their code. And as you can see here also, they have like a lot of iOS simulators where we can test their code, okay? And also they can add additional simulators if they want to. They're gonna be capable to place a simulator name. Let's imagine that I want to place the test name over here. Then you can select the device type that you want to use. You can use an iPhone 4, for example, or the latest one, which is iPhone 14, right? And there we have the OS version, which the default one for the, the moment that I'm recording the video is iOS 16, okay? And that's it. Um, you can create, for example, an iPhone 8 if you want to and so on. Then you have to click on create and you're gonna have this particular new simulator listed in the left side menu over here, okay? As you can see, I have already um, some, of them, some of them configured. I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and this is the device that I'll be using for the Appium Inspector, okay? So how I can tell the Appium Inspector that this is the simulator that I want to use? So I'm gonna open my uh, Appium Inspector over here, and I need to set some desired capabilities. Those desired capabilities are explained as well in my repository here, and you can see that here you have a kind of a guidance. You're gonna need the platform name, the platform version, the device name, the app, and the Appium automation name, okay? Let me explain you what it, what are the values that you need to set there if you wanna follow my script or my example over here. So the first one is going to be the platform name and it is iOS for sure, right? Then you need to specify the platform version, which in my case is 16, that's zero. If you remember, if I open exit code over here, this is the environment version that, I, that I'll be using. I'm sorry, the platform version. And then I need to specify the device name that I want to use, which in this case is iPhone 13 Pro Max. And that's it. You're gonna place that value here and it is gonna be intelligent enough to map the configuration. Then you need to specify where your app is located, right? And if you remember in the last part of the video, I told you that I downloaded and unzipped the file, right? Uh, yeah, I'm zip the zip file and get this particular application. And I have mapped that or I have placed that particular folder in my under my application iOS uh, folder. So uh, let me give you the example of how you can map where, where it is located. Here I am in the root directory, right, of my of my project, and I can go ahead and check the application and I can go ahead and check the iOS folder as well. So you can see that this is the path 
where my application is located. So what I did was practically that. I uh, set the path where I, where I have my application, right? Here you can see, Joanne Esquivel, desktop, uh, test automation, app and demo folder, app iOS, and then I just specified the name of my application with extension that app. And that's it, guys. And then uh, I needed to specify as well the Appium Automation uh, name, which is the driver that we are going to use. If you remember uh, in the last part of the video as well, we listed the driver list in our system. And this is the driver that I, I needed for this particular time, which is XE UI test. And that's it. I have mapped all the elements. And if I want to start the, well, the connection, I just have to expand a little bit this and click on a start session. However, there is an error because it is telling me that Appium Inspector couldn't connect to a server. And that's correct. Let me explain you why. You're going to need to uh, start your Appium server since I'm using the, the beta for the Appium 2. Okay. You can do something like this. I'm going to open another terminal here and you can use the command Appium P. Okay. And you're going to specify after the P flag the port where you want to ex uh, expose the server. In this particular case, it's going to be 4724. Okay. So I'm going to just do it. And you're going to see that your Appium server is going to start. And it is telling me that there are a couple of drivers available. We have the XE UI test, which is a driver for iOS and also the UI Automator 2 for Android. And that's it, guys. Now that I have this done, you're going to see that if I click on start session again, it is going to start the simulator with iPhone 13 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, which is the name, right? The version 16. And it is going to start the process of the installation um, of our um, application and also the web driver agent to manipulate um, well, and perform some actions. It is going to take a little, a little uh, time over here, but well, it is kind of fast right, right now. And you can see that the Appium Inspector is getting connected as well. Okay. I'm going to and expand this a little bit you can see that now i in my appium inspector i have the same view but now if i for example want to explore the products header here we have like a lot of selector possibilities using the ios class chain ios predicate string expat attributes and so on okay so um that's basically the the thing that i wanted to show you guys now in the next part of the video we're gonna be connecting the web driver io framework with this particular uh, application as well. Let me explain you how you can do it. All right, masters, let me explain you how we are gonna handle the, the framework configuration to have like the tests for Android, but now we're gonna have iOS as well, right? So as you uh, saw before, I have the app folder with the applications inside, depending on uh, the environment that I need, Android or iOS, right? But then if you access now the config file, this is a new one, you can see that I have a couple of configuration files. In the past, I used to have only the wdio.conf.js, if you remember correctly, but now I have renamed the Android or, or the original one with Android. And you can see that inside, I do have all the configurations that we have done in the past, right? And now I do also have another wdio configuration file, which is for iOS. And if you access here, you can see that, um, well, I am specifying now the, 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 the folder for the application. I am using the specs for iOS and so on. But let me explain you step by step what is happening in this configuration file in case you haven't checked yet the other video that I well uh, tried to provide uh, to you, which is the Android one. Okay. So in the first line, what I'm doing here is uh, requiring the path from a, well, I'm just requiring this particular module. Okay. And I'm assigning this to the constant project path. So uh, as soon as I require this, I can use the join function, right? And as you can see in the description, it is going to join all arguments together and normalize the resulting path. So what is inside it in the join function is basically a couple of parameters. The first one is the process that CWD. What is doing that? It's basically doing something like this in the console. Let me show you PWD. It is going to return this path over here and it is going to uh, well, kind of concatenate this particular value with the rest of the uh, uh, or the other string that I sent. Okay. 
in this case for um for ios i can actually delete this part because it is not an ios configuration you can see that um what i'm doing is well doing the process that cwd and then sending where my application is located it is under app ios and my rnd and demo app that app and that's it i am just getting the path of where my application is located to send this variable like i did it in my app inspector before right if you remember i just sent the uh, the route or the path where my application was over here but now i'm doing this dynamic dynamically right in case well uh, you download this project as well it is going to be dynamic and, and it is going to get the the path where you are that's that's great now the port is going to be different as i told you before for 723 because it is important it doesn't have to make a conflict with your um appium inspector and then uh, you can see that i am specifying that i want to run my specs under the ios folder okay as you also can see over here i have a couple of tests right under uh, specs and inside of ios i have like the same uh, JS uh, names, but well, they are gonna be dependent on the environment where you want to run them, right? And that's it. Now, if I scroll a little bit down, the max instances is one, of course, for for now, and the capabilities is gonna be the same values or are going to be the same values than the ones that I send in Inspector, right? You can see that the platform version is iOS. The device name, I can use another device just to prove you that this is going to work. And I'll be using the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the dynamic island to see what, how it looks. Well, I can tell you that it is not behaving <laughs> totally fine because, of of course, the dyna dynamic island is new at the moment that I'm recording the video and, and it needs a, a, a visual fix. You're going to see that in a few seconds. The platform version is going to be 16.0. It's the same that I have said in my app inspector the app, uh, automation name or the driver is going to be xe ui test and the app you map is going to be the path that i have got dynamically using the project pack that join function right also i just want to tell you that i have modified the framework a little bit but because now the services uh, requires this appium um, service as, as we did before but now it is going to have like options inside and we can specify the address the port if you want to try something else or in and also i can specify where i want to see the locks you can see that i have executed a couple of times this and here we have the locks of what is happening in in, in the execution so it is going to record that execution a uh, lock that's it now uh, let me sh show you that this is going to work because i'm going to come here to my ios folder and i'll be accessing the login that end to end js we're going to see all this information in a few seconds about different uh, type of selectors right uh, we can select an element by accessibility relative expat class change predicated string and so on okay but now uh, what i want to do is a simple await the driver that debug i'm sorry guys driver that debug just to pause the the execution process and make sure that this is working fine okay Another thing that I have done, guys, is basically come here to the package.json. So you can see that the script, in the scripts part, I have a couple of them. I have WDIO iOS, right? And also I have WDIO Android. And every single script has uh, um, a scope. The WDIO iOS is going to run well, the WDIOS conf.js file. And if I want to run Android, we're gonna be use the, I'm going to be using the other configuration file. So in my case, I want to do npm run and the script name, which is WDIO iOS. And that's it. You're going to see that it is going to open a new simulator. Okay. Actually, it is over here. You can see the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is the one that we define in our uh, desired capabilities over here. Right. There it is. And well, it is going to take uh, a few seconds until the application is, is installed and the web driver agent is is up and running but it is only going to happen at the at the very first shot then it is going to be very pretty quick to be honest and there it is now a um, web driver io is accessing the iphone 14 pro max you can see the dynamic island making a mess here in the application but yeah that's the thing that i wanted to show you guys um with this set i think that we can continue working in the next part 
understanding how we can map elements in the application, how you can use different selectors and stuff to, to continue working with your with this amazing automation tool, okay? Let's do it. Okay, masters, in, in the following part of the video, I want to explain you how you can start, a, well, creating your first selectors and, and doing your automation workflow, okay? So let me explain you the steps that I want to reproduce, okay? The first test is going to be something like this. I wanna click on the menu button over here, then click on login, then enter uh, uh, a bad username, right? And a bad password, just for demo purposes, click on login. And then I'll, I'll be having this um, message over here, Provide, provided credentials do not match any user in this service, okay? And, but however, if I enter the correct username and password, you're gonna notice that, um, well, it is gonna be redirected or the user is going to be redirected to the homepage and, it, and the user should look, the user should be able to see the products word at the, at the very top of, of, your, of the application, right? So that's the, the validation that I wanna try and I want to do it, to do it with you, step by step with WebDriver IO and Appium. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna stop this uh, execution because I wanna start a new one from scratch using Appium Inspector. Let me do a, a quick trick here because Appium Inspector with this um, scale size is it doesn't doesn't look correctly. I need to do some tricks over here, but there it is now. Um, you can see that the simulator is gonna start the installation of my application again and i'll be having access to the internal structure and all the elements inside using the appium inspector i'm just well creating a connection it is installing the web driver agent again also the application that i want to test and automate and it is just a matter of seconds i guess so there it is now it is loading the, the the application that's fine and there it is now i do have access to uh, to the application if i refresh the screenshot over here i should have I should have access to the internal structure. And if I, for example, or for instance, I click on the products over here, you can see that I am gonna have a lot of suggestions about how I can find the element. I can do it by iOS class chain, right? Or iOS predicated string or expat, okay? Also, we have a lot of attributes over here and I wanna explain you how I'm gonna uh, handle these scenarios, okay? So as I told you before, the first thing that I wanna do is click on this menu button over here and you can see that it has an accessibility id if you saw the last video about how you can start doing your automation in android well it is going to be the same you can come here to your um framework okay let me close every single it over here just to explain you what is going to happen uh, for the new ones in the channel here we have a mocha js example uh, video with all you need to know about Mocha and how to structure your test. But in simple terms, describe is a kind of a test suite. A before each is something that is going to be executed before each it execution over here, okay? And the it itself is gonna be a kind of a test, okay? Or something, or yeah, a, a test to be, to, be uh, to keep it simple, right? And in, in the before each, you can see that, well, what I'm doing here is, well, mapping the element with the accessibility ID tap bar option menu over here, right? And I'm just using this symbol at the beginning of the, um, well, of the selector. So with this particular symbol that I don't know in English, I'm sorry guys, <laughs> I'm finding the element by its accessibility ID. Uh, well, this await and async await is something that you have to start learning about and because WebDriver IO use it, right? But the, the, what is happening here is basically that the, the before each is gonna await until the element tap with the accessibility ID tap bar option menu is visible and present and, and exist in the, in, the, in the application. And then it is going to click or tap in, in it, okay? So it is going to do something like this. I'm gonna click on that. And, and that's what the WebDriver IO is going to try to, to perform, right? Then, if you remember when I, if I open the Appium Inspector and I click on, on that element, you're gonna notice that here we have another menu, right? And this menu has the login option that I would need to click. So you can do a lot of strategies to find that element, but the one that I'm, I'll be using is this one, using expat, okay? What is happening in this expat? I think that I explained that before in, in, the, in the other video, but 
Let me explain you pretty quick what is happening here. In this expat, okay, I'll be using a couple of slashes at the beginning of the expression to find all the elements in the application, every single element that I have over here, okay? So, then it is going to look for the element with this particular type, XCUI element type other. You can see the type over here. So, it is going to look for all the elements with this particular type, and then it is going to filter by the attribute name that you can see over here, okay? So, it's going to use at name, it's equal, and then here we have the expression that we want to evaluate. Menu item locking should be the value for the name attribute. And you can see that this is the value that I, I am looking for. So, this XPAD is going to work perfectly fine in my script. So, in my framework, you can see that, well, I'm doing that. I'm just finding that element in the, in the application and then clicking on it. So, as soon as I have done that, if you check this behavior here, it is going to display to us the logging scenario that I wanted to reproduce, okay? So, I have placed these instructions in the before each because this is a kind of precondition that I want to repeat over and over again uh, before each it execution over here. And it is not part of the test itself, all right? That's amazing. Now that uh, we understand this, uh, well, the accessibility selector and the relative expat by tag plus attribute, <laughs> I want to start doing uh, or explaining you a couple of um, interesting selectors as well, okay? So, as you probably notice here, I need to find the username input uh, element over here. I can access it by accessibility ID, of course, which is like the best practice, but also we can do it by X, but, but now we also have another a couple of possibilities here. iOS class chain, right? And also iOS predicate string. And as you're going to see over here, well, it has like an expression here that we can review in the future. Let me, let me know in the comment section if you would like to see a full video talking about iOS class chain and iOS predicate string. And also, if you remember from the past video, we can talk about the UI selector uh, strategy that we have in Android. But let me know that in the comment section because I can perfectly make make another video of that. Okay, but I'll be using the, the value that I have over here and I'll be playing with this, okay? So how I can map the username input element using the iOS class chain? Well, it's pretty simple. Let me show you that. If you wanna map an element by class chain, you need to use the prefix a dash iOS class chain um, column, right? And then just send the value of that particular class chain. You can see that I'm just sending the same value that I have over here, okay? And that's amazing because now, well, I can set the value or set the username that I want automatically, okay? That's it. But now, if you check the password, it also has a iOS class chain, but I want to explain you the iOS predicate string as well. This is something that we can cover in another video. Um, and this is the value for the iOS predicate string that I need to map. So, it is pretty similar to the last one. If you want to um, map an element by predicate string, you can use the prefix dash iOS predicate string and column. Okay. And you can see that I am doing that and then just sending the value that I have in my Appian selector over here. Okay, that's amazing. Now we have the username and the password mapped and we are sending the value test user for the username and the test and the test password a value for the password input. And that's it. Now I can perfectly come here and check the login button right as well. Let me see. This has a, a accessibility ID. It has an iOS class chain, iOS predicated string, expat. And well, I decided to show you another workaround that you can use, right? You can use an expat, but you you can avoid the usage of the type itself. If you remember from the very first example in the, in the expat part, I was using the type of the element. You can replace that by asterisk if you want to and you need to, because there are some times where you need to well, specifically select that particular element or type. But I just wanted to give you this other possibility over here. And I'll be um, filtering my element by its name, login button, that you can see that it is going to be login button over here, the name. Okay? 
looks good right and i i'm going to click on that and if i i if i enter the grunk username and password let me show you this I am uh, typing the username here and then the password, okay? And then I click on the login button, right? Or I tap on the login button. You're gonna notice that we're gonna have an error message over here, right? Because the username wasn't found in the database, right? You know what is happening here, let me see. There it is. There is the, 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 the error that I wanted to see. Provided credentials do not match any user in this service. Okay. So you can perfectly access the element by any strategy that you want to, right? But in my case, I wanted to use the accessibility ID. Okay. You can access the, you just have to copy the value and then use it. Well, using the, the symbol at the beginning, this one over here, right? And then you can map it by its accessibility ID. And well, this is the structure for an assertion, right? For example, let's imagine that you want to validate the text of this particular text that I have in the in our application after I click uh, the login button with an invalid username and password, right? So you can use this. Await, expect. The first parameter in the expect, or the only one that I'll be using here, is the selector of the element that I want to check, right? In this particular case, is this a um, accessibility ID that I just mapped before, right? And then as soon as you have sent the the element that you want to check, you can perfectly check or validate that that element should have or to have text provided credentials do not match any username in the service, as you can see over here. Okay, so it is going to check the, the error message as soon as I enter a wrong username and password, guys. I hope that you're getting the idea. I know it's kind of tricky and I'm trying to do uh, a pretty quick explanation because I don't want to, well, have a video of two hours. <laughs> but yeah, let's continue with the, another example, which is logging with valid credentials over here. And uh, well, I'll be doing the same stuff. I'll be sending now a correct username and a correct password. Then I'll be clicking on the login button. And instead of doing an assertion uh, with the error, I want to try something else. Let me show you this. Mm -hmm. I'll be entering, right? A, I can I can prove you this. Let me show you this. Um, if I want to, right? And if I enter a correct username and password and I click on looking, I'll be redirected to the home page. Okay. And you can see the products header over here. There are multiple ways to make an assertion of this, right? That you're logged in correctly. But I'll be checking that as soon as I log in, I do have the products header in the screen. So how I do it, I'll be closing the app inspector because I need to reset the connection. All right, let me just the header over here, right? And I just need to map it using a selector. So uh, the strategy that I decided to use was a simple expat like this one, right? And I just wanted to check that as soon as I click and I entered the username and the password in the login, I was redirected to the main page and it has the header products over here, right? It is pretty simple, uh, a pretty dummy example as well, but I think that this is the kind of uh, examples that can, can give you a light uh, for future projects. So I'll be executing this project and you're gonna notice how it is gonna start working in our iPhone 14 Pro Max because this is the version of the um, or the desired capability that we have set in in our project right if you remember in our wdio uh, dash ios conf .js, i wanted to run this in my iphone 14 pro max right so there it is it is just a matter of second it is installing the the web driver and you can see that the process is going to start every single uh, selector seems to be working there is the error message right that um, that I needed to check. And then you're gonna notice as well that um, I'll be starting the second script, which is the correct username and password. It is gonna click on login and the products header is there. All right, so as you can see over here, it is hard to read this piece of code because even when we understand what is happening in this selector, it is not self-descriptive, right? So for example, this uh, expat is hard to read. And let's imagine that tomorrow, um, I don't know, maybe the username uh, selector 
has to be changed and now we have to change a couple of lines in different it's it is going to be a headache to be honest right and in in a lot of situations that we can avoid for example also here we have like there are three commands that are repeated in a couple of eats right and what well, i want to give you the the uh, a workaround um what well, to kind of improve your code a very simple one because there, there is a lot of design patterns but we're gonna be using like the page slash screen objects okay so you're gonna see that in my framework under the test folder i do have like a folder named screen objects and in the past video we created like the android folder for the objects that i wanted to map but now in the ios folder i do have like a new structure and and what well, the new selectors for every single screen let me explain you what I'm gonna do, okay? So, for example, uh, if I open here my um, simulator, okay, and if I open this application here, we're gonna notice that uh, we can like divide this screen in, in small, uh, well, like units. This could be a name like the catalog screen, right, with a lot of um, items inside. And also we have like the cart screen and the menu screen, right, like the main menu screen. And we can consider like this bar at the bottom of our application, like another screen, right? Because it has like three elements and, and we can map the elements and the actions inside. So I decided to create, to create, um, well, a bottom side menu screen. <laughs> okay. And inside of this class, which is a class basically inside of a, a JS uh, file. Okay. Um, I have created a getter and this getter is going to return basically the selector that I have found at the beginning of this video, right? As you can see over here, this is the selector to click on this particular menu option, okay? I'm just mapping the element inside of a class. So when I need to um, click or, uh, yeah, when I need to click on this button, we can use this getter to make reference to the selector, right? So it could be like, better right and, and most readable so if if you access here my sum login that end to end .js, which is under specs ios and this is the second file inside of the folder you can see that what i'm doing here is basically uh, importing right or requiring the um, well here you have it i'm requiring the 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 class right and as you can see in the class itself what i'm doing here is a module exports it's equal to new button side menu screen. I'm just exporting an, ins in, an, insta an instance of this particular class, okay? So if I want to use this particular require that I have assigned to a constant named button side menu screen, okay? You can see that I can access the expand menu button getter that I have over here, okay? Expand menu button getter. And it is going to return the selector itself. And now I can click on that element. And as you can see, the bottom side menu screen and that expand menu button, well, it's kind of more readable, right? And, and I can click on that particular element without any kind of issue. And I, I have done the same for the main menu screen. You can see that. Um, so for example, if I come here to my main menu screen, well, I just created a looking menu option getter, right? that you can that is going to be referencing this login option right and uh, you can see that this is the the same selector that i created before i'm just mapping this selector inside of the main menu screen.js inside of the return itself so in my sum login in the screen object model looking that end to end.js i'm just well requiring the class itself right so i can access the login menu option that click but now here is the interesting part. Let me show you this. I'm gonna log out from the application and you're gonna notice that, well, here we have another screen that I have created as well in another class named login.screen.js, okay? And well, you can see that I have mapped the input username that I got from the original example, this one over here, using the iOS class chain. Do you remember that? Also the input password was, well, selected using the iOS predicate. The bottom login is an expat with an asterisk instead of the type itself. 
and then we have the error message that we realized we were having right when we enter an incorrect and a password because the message itself is is part of this screen and we can map it over here right and but the interesting part here is that we can create as well some methods inside of the class some behaviors right and one of the behaviors that, that we have in the logging screen is basically the logging action and this uh, method can receive for example the username and the password and i can use the same getters that i have declared before to perform some actions using the this keyword okay so it is going to set the value of the username uh, to the inputs username element right input password and now it is going to set the password and then it is going to click on that with this set you can also check that um well now my it's have a class instance of that particular uh, screen object right and a uh, well i can perfectly access the method and just send the the username and the password that i want to uh, try so it, the code is encapsulated right uh, well this this test doesn't know what is happening in the login and in, it is amazing right this is a, a pattern that you can use for sure and then, well, I'll be accessing the login screen error message text to make sure it has the error message that I need, right? And also, uh, for example, I have made another class for the catalog screen, right? With this particular, well, catalog screen that I think that we have over here, right? And I was mapping the products header as part of this particular screen object. So, uh, well, you, I hope that you see what, what we're doing here. And if I execute this for sure, you're going to see that it is going to work again. I have done this uh, in, the, in, the, in the last part of the video, but you're going to notice that we're going to have a couple of executions, right? Mm -hmm. And if I just let the, um, the execution goes, you're going to see the results at the end. And I want to show you that this is going to work. Okay. This is the first scenario using like spaghetti code, right? then it is going to enter the correct username and then the correct password it is going to click on login and the products header is going to be displayed in the catalog screen right so it is going to check that and then it is going to start over again with the second uh, describe that we have over here and it is going to use now the page object model and it is going to work perfectly fine as you can see over here right mm -hmm. okay it is just a matter of seconds to see that it is going to end and it is going to work fine. I really appreciate guys if you can subscribe, hit the like button because it is a hard video to record. <laughs> to be honest, it's a long one and, and the week is short. So I, I really hope that you see the, the well, the value in this video and, and you can subscribe to the channel. And, and now guys, you can see that we here we have like the two different spec files under the iOS folder I've been running and we're using uh, such an amazing design pattern to to have like better and cleaner code so guys uh, thank you very much for staying until the end please let me know in the comment section if you're here and that you're supporting the channel and you enjoy this and, and you and you see the you see it uh, helpful for you thank you very much master see you in the next one and bye bye